Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm John Comel, and as always, I'm pleased and honored to uh, chair uh, this joint meeting of uh, the Power Authority and uh, Canal System. This is our obviously first meeting of uh, the new year. Our uh, first meeting subsequent to the conclusion of the Buffalo Bill season. So a very brief <laughs> pause and moment of silence and respect. Uh, the better team won, but hey, uh, we will be back. We will return. Uh, this meeting's uh, been duly noticed as uh, required by open uh, meetings law. I'm pleased as always uh, to welcome Gil uh, and uh, the entire NIPA team and otherwise uh, call the meeting uh, to order. Uh, we've all had the opportunity to review uh, the agenda uh, unless any other, unless anyone has uh, any proposed amendments to that agenda, I'd ask for a motion to adopt uh, that which was presented to us. So moved. Oh, second. Second. Thanks, Michael Dennis. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Uh, motion carried. The agenda is adopted as uh, we typically do. <laughs> in the first hour or so in executive uh, session. Um, I'd ask for uh, a motion to conduct such a session pursuant uh, to Article uh, 1.5 of the Public Officers Law. So moved. Second. Second. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, uh, Dennis. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Uh, said uh, we'll adjourn to executive session for plus or minus uh, <coughs> four and look forward to returning then. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, pleased to uh, be back with you. And uh, as we restart, if I could ask for a motion to resume uh, our meeting in open session. So moved. Second. Thank you, Judge. Second from uh, Dennis. Michael. Dennis, I heard Dennis, somebody back in there. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? We're back in open session. And as always, uh, no uh, votes were taken uh, while we were in executive session. Uh, we've all had an opportunity and we've been polled uh, relative to any potential conflicts on actions uh, we'll be taking later. Any changes uh, to uh, the indications uh, that have otherwise been provided to Karen? If not, um, we'll move with some pace. Uh, our last two or three meetings have been very forward-looking, focused, strategically, uh, operational uh, planning and uh, budgets and other uh, key initiatives. Uh, today, uh, there's that we start with a heavy dose of looking back. Uh, typical for uh, this time of the year to look back on you know, the outcomes of the prior year. And I'm very pleased uh, to introduce uh, Gil uh, to proudly talk about uh, our accomplishments in the face of uh, adversity. A very good year under any circumstance uh, reflects uh, all the better, uh, given everything that we and, and the rest of the world has been up against. Gil, floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, good morning, trustees, uh, management team, uh, and uh, the public listening. Uh, I will talk about our just a quick update on COVID and then a number of items that uh, reflect back to what we accomplished last year. Next slide, please. Uh, COVID, we have uh, done really well despite the difficulties and the complications of this pandemic. We kept our employees safe. That's always been our number one priority, safe and healthy. And we operated our power system generation and transmission no matter what. And we did that well, reliably uh, across the state all year round. Next slide, please. As you can see here, uh, I ask you to focus on the right side of this chart, the red uh, dots in line, that's the, uh, the number, I'm sorry, the, the kind of orange, the number of positive cases uh, that we have has been really low recently, but really low all year round relative to the infection rate on the state. We have a very specific, we developed a very specific COVID countermeasures protocol that we adhere to. As you can see on the left side, the various triggers and specific action that we take based on those triggers. Next slide, please. 
A um, couple of things that we did right from the beginning is, is to have a very robust testing strategy and uh, contact tracing strategy uh, in, in addition to our education and uh, making sure that our employees are following uh, CDC and Department of Health guidelines. Uh, we also partnered with SUNY and SUNY Upstate Medical in Syracuse for a very a scalable saliva-based uh, testing protocol that we have been employing across our power plants and uh, control centers uh, statewide. Uh, next slide, please. I'm very, very proud to report that despite the pandemic and all the difficulty that came with it, that we met our each and every performance metric that we set forth. Uh, some of them were adjusted because of uh, COVID, but nevertheless, this is a statement uh, of great execution by the employees of NIPA and Canals uh, in collaboration with our board of trustees and our stakeholders. Next slide, please. Um, some other uh, items that are notable to highlight, uh, we had a very good plan on how to return uh, and how to open and close the valve in terms of returning to work. I mentioned already contact tracing and testing. Uh, we communicated regularly and often with our employees and our customers. We helped our customers by uh, giving them a forbearance and paying their electric bills and expanding the hydro allocations for their power to make their budgeting more predictable during this deep, deep recession from the pandemic. I mentioned about our countermeasures. It's a very good protocol that guides our day-to-day -day operation. Uh, we've been working with other uh, entities, both within and outside the state. And, and so it's been really a, a great year. It, it speaks to the resilience of NIPA. We did not only bounce back, we bounced forward. And I'm very proud of everyone's effort uh, last year. Next slide, please. Uh, from a finan financial perspective, we issued bonds during the fog of war in the spring of last year to make sure that we were ready to face whatever the pandemic would uh, bring to us for the rest of, of that year. And uh, we did so and maintain a good and healthy liquidity uh, to run our operations. Our credit ratings were maintained, uh, were not really impacted and are uh, by, by maintaining a very strong balance sheet. Next slide, please. As I mentioned, we adjusted, we had to adjust our capital programs because of the pause when we had to shut down on all of our projects within NIPA and projects with our customers. But after we revised and adjusted our goals, I am pleased to report that we executed really well. What we decided uh, could be done, despite of the pandemic, we did and we delivered uh, across every aspect and every metric of this capital programs. Next slide, please. We also recalibrated based on the board's feedback, our strategic plan, we call it Vision 2030. Uh, we submitted this to you last month and you agreed to approve and fund this plan and we will now move into execution starting this year. Uh, next slide, please. We also responded to a call to action last year, uh, late May, early June during uh, the racial unrest across our country. And we know that we have a role to play within our own um, jurisdiction, our own environment at NIPA, and we did. We developed a very uh, forward-looking, industry-leading diversity, equity, and inclusion plan, which you also reviewed and approved last month. Next slide, please. Our governor, announced an extremely ambitious program in his state of the state address in early January 
to uh, advance our state's energy and environmental goals from large scale renewables to offshore wind to offshore wind manufacturing in Albany and Brooklyn and the construction of the green energy transmission superhighway, which we will play a pivotal role. In fact, of the five projects that he announced during his state of the state, three of those five are NIPAS projects. Uh, these are the three projects that we are leading to build uh, as the anchor of that green energy transmission superhighway, our smart path, which is from Messina to Krogan in the Adirondacks, uh, our project that we are partnered with LS Power that you approved also in our recent board meeting. Uh, we are an investor in that project. It's called AC Transmission Segment A from Marcy to New Scotland. Uh, and a project that we are in the midst of developing uh, in on a fast track basis, the Northern New York Transmission Line. So this all these projects are going to be the backbone and foundation of what the governor announced in, in NIPA. We will play the key role in building this energy superhighway. Uh, that's the end of my report, Mr. Chairman. I'm very proud of the collective, NIPA, Canals and its employees, the board of trustees, our customers and our stakeholders. We all worked as one last year and uh, it showed in, in our performance, it showed the resilience of NIPA uh, and, and I'm very proud of it. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, give it back to you, the stage to you. Yeah, no, th and thank you, Gil, as I said uh, in the intro, uh, frankly, uh, what you just recapped would be a terrific year under uh, the best of circumstances. And for what, uh, with the benefit of your leadership and your team's uh, Terrific work, uh, just an outstanding uh, year, uh, given uh, the dynamics and the challenges that we continue to confront today. We talk like it's in the rearview mirror. Obviously, we, we know the pandemic isn't, uh, but frankly, the tone and tenor is just reflective of the confidence level uh, that's been developed uh, that by you and your team to navigate um, in, in spite of uh, the circumstances. So. Congratulations uh, to you uh, as our leader and to your entire team and uh, all of NIPA for uh, just an outstanding year and uh, the many, many significant accomplishments that position us even better for the future. So kudos. Anything else for Gil uh, before we have uh, Joe, Sarah, and Adam drill a little deeper? Yeah, I just wanted to say just quickly, I, I echo uh, the comments that you've made, Mr. Chair, but I also wanted to say that, you know, I feel like you've done such amazing work in terms of not only showing our resili resiliency, but building up protocols, um, particularly around, you know, sort of the response to the pandemic as it's ongoing, your response to racial um, uh, um, uh, uh, unrest that happened throughout, you've laid foundations and good protocols to help us respond and build you know, a pathway forward in the future. So our financial performance, uh, I think, you know, even in the challenging circumstances, there are lots of utilities that would take it uh, even, even uh, outside of a pandemic. So just wanted to congratulate you and the team on the work that I know was very hard under very hard circumstances, but ultimately yielded, you know, a very good um, a story for, for NIPA and lays a wonderful path work for going forward in the future. Thank you very much. Okay, well, <clears throat> as I said, uh, we'll drill a little bit uh, deeper um, with uh, Joe, Sarah, and Adam. So Joe, kick us off. Uh, operationally, obviously, we, as we've seen all year long, some tremendous outcomes. Uh, uh, recap it for us. All right, great. Thanks, John. And uh, uh, thank you, trustees and staff and everybody joining us. Um, I think I'm still within the threshold to say Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, so yeah, as Gil pointed out, all of our, as we drill down into the actual performance metrics for operations, uh, we obviously are generation and transmission organization. That's our bent. Uh, throughout all the fits and starts of our, our, our program, uh, we were able to maintain the reliability of both generation and transmission above the thresholds we set at the beginning of the year. These are not adjusted. These are our thresholds that we set prior to COVID and we're able to maintain those throughout this crisis. 
Uh, equally as important and maybe more important in the final is, uh, analysis is that we were able to keep our employees safe. So we're very proud that our environmental incidents were below our target and our DART rate. I do want to just uh, recap that the environmental incident uh, threshold were up target wise because we did add air exceedances, which we were tracking separately. Um, and that 29 does represent all exceedances, not only the oil spills or anything like that, but the, the air exceedances as well. So it's a great uh, uh, a great uh, uh, milestone to hit. Next slide, please. Just wanna give the uh, board and the public a quick update on uh, some of the projects. It's kind of exciting. We're gonna talk about one that's just getting underway. Next Generation Niagara, as you know, is the $1.1 billion capital uh, improvement that we're doing at the Niagara Power Project. And just wanted to show you some uh, photos of work actually happening there. And of course, at any given time, uh, when the uh, uh, pandemic uh, releases our, our, our allows our ability to, to travel and see these things, we welcome uh, the board to take a look at any of these things on site when you have a chance. Uh, very exciting work. But uh, we were able to demolish what we call our unit control boards and governor cabinets. These are items that control the generation speed and protect the equipment. And we are going to uh, the modern state-of-the-art equipment in those as well. And are continuing to pull some cables and the tunnels which uh, connect all of these devices to our switch yard and other ancillary equipment uh, in support of this work. Uh, we will be in the coming uh, months starting our control room upgrades. This is very exciting. Um, in, in the generator area, some of that equipment is 50 or 60 years old, uh, obviously well maintained, but even 50, 60 years old, uh, years ago, it was 50 or 60 year old technology. So almost hundred year old technology that's been operating so well there. We're gonna be updating that. And with that comes uh, new lighting, operator workstations, video display walls, and things that make it more sensitive and, and accurate for our operators to see and be alerted as we, as we look at that as well. So our unit 12, which is uh, uh, this unit here that you're seeing torn apart, will be uh, returned to service in May of 21. Uh, and the estimate of completion on 213 million is contained in that $1.1 billion uh, program. So our first one will be done. Uh, next slide, please. On the other side of Niagara is the Lewiston pump generating plant. And we're also on the other side of this capital program. So our unit 10, which is the 11th unit that we overhauled in that capital program, uh, was completed in December 18th of last year of 2020. And uh, that was only impacted by a couple of uh, unplanned work items around the rotor rim ledge uh, to, to repair. And of course the fits and starts that we had in the pandemic. Uh, we are starting the, the PG-1, the first pump unit, which is gonna be the 12th unit. Uh, on January 4th, we actually started that. Uh, we are within the budget. You probably, it was many years ago, but as we uh, talked about this over the years, reminded that it was a $460 million plan to be completed in December of 2022. And in both cases, we are on target for budget and schedule. And I would entertain any questions on, on my report. Uh, Joe, go back uh, to your scorecard uh, for a minute and <clears throat> echo what uh, I just said in general, uh, outstanding uh, results uh, for you and the team. Uh, but give us uh, your thoughts with the benefit of hindsight on the why of this. A, in a year when one would have thought we wouldn't uh, string uh, all greens, uh, why did we have such positive outcomes under adverse circumstances, real or perceived? Yeah, I think from, from my perspective, the number one reason would be focus. I think what, what happened with the fits and starts is people were, you, you, whenever you're under duress, your senses are, are heightened. And I think what happened is we uh, spent a lot of attention to stopping non-essential work immediately and recognize that we had people that we had to focus on doing that safely, safing off projects. We couldn't actually stop things immediately. There were things that we had to continue with essential personnel to put them in a safe condition. Equally important, as we calculated the way we were bringing the work back, we did a very similar um, themed upstart, which was standing down if necessary, making sure that we had not only the, the normal protocols of tying off and fire protective clothing, hard hat, safety shoes, but also the new paradigms around social distancing, the face masks, and making sure we had the right equipment for them, that all of that equipment was also fire retardant. And I think that just heightened the awareness. We were communicating way more than we would normally do. Um, and executing and starting that work back up, doing the safety tailgates. 
And of course, we continued to reiterate the normal safety practices as well. So I think people just had a heightened awareness, a heightened sensitivity as they were bringing it back to work. And it worked in our favor. Of course, we learned some best practices out of that that we're going to perpetuate because obviously we don't want to have a pandemic to, to force that focus. But I think that definitely had in uh, a kind of a weird way, a positive impact on our, our sensitivity to the safety in nature. And in terms of generation and transmission, are we starting to see some of the paybacks for the investments we've begun to make and reliability and uh, system reliability and the like? Uh, is it uh, uh, favorable, we'll call them weather, but external factors? I mean, w again, there to be running frankly, ahead of what's uh, a high bar. Uh, what are your thoughts there? I mean, and yeah. more importantly, can we institutionalize all of that going forward? Does that position us to make this more than an aberration? This, this becomes our new normal going forward. Yeah, I think so. I think what's going on here is um, that it, obviously from a revenue standpoint that we don't really have control of the markets, but what that causes is, us, is, is that to be more important that we're available when we are called upon. So in, We've been working very closely with the commercial operations team in ERM and dispatching our units in a way that optimizes the, the not only the capacity and energy that we're always uh, relied upon, but some of the ancillary services as well. So we're we're going to be able to take advantage when we can of, of of making sure that we're available when renewables enter the system or storage and other technologies come in and we are able to ramp our units and have an operating um, paradigm that's wider than it was in the past based on the upgrades that we have for this, this equipment. And I think we're gonna see the fruits of that even more effectively going forward. Uh, obviously, these are things that are um, outlined in our strategic vision uh, 2030 um, to make sure that we're enhancing the value of it. And that's two prong. It's really making sure we're optimizing the operation as is and making sure that our stakeholders know the value of those systems to make, to, uh, enable really, um, us to hit the targets for the state. Joe, if I could follow up. This yep, go ahead, Trace. One question that I had just con continuing the line of thinking, a question, uh, question that the chair raised, um, you know, along with the saying, no good deed goes unpunished. You know, when I, when I look at this, what I'm left with wondering, are we setting the targets aspirational enough uh, and stretching ourselves in setting the target? Again, looking at the fact that we did, uh, you know, very, we ended the year very impressively and even under the circumstances the, that we had with the pandemic. So at least, you know, are, are, we, are you comfortable that we're setting the targets, you know, far enough, again, aggressive enough, ambitious enough, aspirational enough, um, I, I'm responding to that and I'm smiling because I'm never satisfied in that area. So I think you're, you're hundred percent right. Uh, so you, you'll actually see the generator market readiness is a number that we per, we've perpetuated over the last couple of years. It is a stretch target uh, for us. So that is quite an accomplishment. And we did, as you see, exceed it uh, quite significantly. The scale of that target is pretty wide, even though the numbers are there it would be very unreasonable for us to have a, a target, you know, below 90, say, for example. So even though, um, you know, that target is set very high. Um, the band that we deal with is very small in that in that frame. Uh, so we always revisit well, them every year. Well, filibuster, Joe, you just have to say, yep, I agree. I agree. Uh, we will establish even more uh, stretch targets in 21. Yeah, we will. We will adjust these as our performance improves, we adjust. Okay. Good. Thank you. <laughs> Anything else for Joe? Yeah, just real quick. Um, Joe, I, I'm, I, the word eliminate is a problem for me. There's no way you're eliminating a cyber risk. It just, it just, it's a mitigation management or, you know, monitoring mitigation management. Um, I just think that it's elimination of that. That's, you know, I don't think anybody talks in those terms. There's, there's always a risk out there. Fair point. Well, so, you know, if we could just change that word to, you know, monitor, manage, and mitigate might be uh, something to consider. So it's like 3M. 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 Somebody's already right. got that. Fair okay. point. Do that. Um, all of that uh, said, Joe, don't want to lose outstanding outcomes. Kudos uh, to you and the team. We're obviously continuing to invest heavily. We'll be talking more about that in a couple minutes. Um, so uh, great work uh, by you, your leadership, and uh, your team for uh, driving the, the essential component of this bus. So very, very well done. Thank you. And I'll, thank you for your support as always. All right, Sarah, you were... Uh, <clears throat> 
uh, swimming upstream or a little more victim of uh, the external and market headwinds. So yes, uh, setting, and setting stretch targets. <laughs> exactly. You, you and the team persevered very well in spite of that. So recap uh, outcomes uh, for us, please. Right. Yeah, I just I do want to take a moment just really quickly to thank the entire commercial operations leadership team and, and their respective teams because amidst the global pandemic, the uh, social unrest, the macro political environment, there was a lot of personal and professional impacts um, on them. And uh, I think they did a yeoman's job in delivering in 2020. So thank you all of them. That being said, uh, we entered uh, 2020 with the target at the gross margin level of 335 million. And we ended the year at 293. There were a few factors that had an impact there. Uh, the first being that we had one of the most mild record, uh, winners on record, the third warmest in recorded history. And then Q4 was equally mild. Secondly, we had the impacts of demand uh, with respect to the COVID pandemic. We saw in New York City in the Southeast, which is where the dominant load is, that uh, peak demand was 10% below typical levels. And on average, uh, across the entire state, demand was down 5 to 7%. And finally, thirdly, uh, the abundance of gas. If there was slowdown of the industrial complex across the state uh, or, and the country with respect to the industry, uh, there was there was a high levels of inventory, and we saw a 37% reduction in the cost of uh, fuel relative to what we anticipated in October of 2019, pushing uh, gas below a dollar. The great light within all of that is the fact that our hedging program, the volumetric and systematic program and strategy that we put together in 2020 uh, bore fruit. And uh, per, when, we, when it settled out, it settled 50 million approximately in favor for NIPA. So thank you to ERM um, for all the work and diligence along with you on that. On economic development, our customers are still there, as Gil highlighted when he spoke. And we are 82% allocated relative to our hydroelectric economic development programs. Typically, we see applications between 80 and 100 of them annually. Uh, this uh, past year, we saw 59 applications and were able to allocate uh, uh, megawatts of hydro that supported over 9,000 jobs and over 750 million in capital commitment. Next slide. Again, I don't want to belabor the, the headwinds of COVID, but ultimately our construction projects that impact clean energy solutions and evolve were delayed by six months. Um, that was from the New York pause, whereas many of my colleagues have articulated already, the health and safety of our employees, our contractors, and of our communities was first and foremost. Uh, so the uh, ultimate six month delay was uh, due to the formal pause, the remobilization of our contractors, the dispensing by our customers of the CapEx that they had uh, put on pause themselves, and ultimately the lower capacity and the EHS protocols that we put in place to ensure that when we went back to work, it was being done safely. That being said, as, as Gil articulated, we provided uh, support directly to those on the front lines, ensuring that our hospitals continued to run, the transit services that uh, provided transport for frontline workers continued to run, and the government buildings that were overseeing the pandemic response also were operating. On Evolve, uh, we, uh, it was a twinkle in people's eyes a couple of years ago, and the board provided 250 million, up to 250 million to support the governor's policies. We saw that come to fruition and the first deal on the ground was put in place this year. We had an opening at LaGrangeville that was attended by the Lieutenant Governor. So, and we have a robust pipeline of about hundred uh, chargers for 2021. So just picking up momentum on that. And uh, next slide. These are just a few of the accomplishments for 2020. Again, so much across the board when it comes to NIPA, the Build Deferral Program uh, as EdCapt 1.0. Additionally, in December, you approved EdCap 2.0, which is providing temporary allocation for price and budget certainty to, to our customers. And already we have almost 50% applications for that in just a month. And uh, there will be about 210 megawatts already being taken down in February. With respect to distributed resources and flexibility, uh, just a couple of years ago, there was 
not even a pipeline. And now we have almost 250 megawatts uh, in the pipeline there uh, with marquee projects, as you will recall, at JFK, Community Distributed Solar, as well as the rooftop solar at the Javits Center. We have been honing in 2020 our focus on environmental justice communities and where we can bring NIDA's expertise to bear there. And then finally, uh, as part of organizational evolution, I merged the Distributed Energy Resource Advisory Group with uh, the New York Energy Manager in order to help develop a more holistic behind the meter uh, service that will help all of those assets better compete in the market as uh, the distribution and wholesale markets evolve. Transmission, I don't really need to go through. Gil uh, highlighted all the work we're doing, but I'd like to uh, give kudos to the commercial team that managed our uh, relationship and partnership with LS Power to achieve Article 7. Uh, that uh, undertook the development and positioned the Northern New York project uh, to be selected and petitioned and selected as the first priority project for NAPA. The 200 megawatts that were facilitated by executing a lease at our land at Paletti, which is now uh, helping deliver a third of the goal that we set for NAPA in the, PL, in the Vision 2030 strategy, and the second large scale renewable procurement. Uh, that will be bringing over 100 megawatts uh, into, into the state as well. And then finally, I already did touch on this with respect to electric vehicles, but we are looking at targeting and continuing to support the 40% emissions uh, that, uh, that of the total emissions that the electric, that the transport industry makes up across the state. We have, again, a marquee project there, the largest non-Tesla public charging uh, Station ports in in uh, the Northeast, and we've already begun very proactively working with Mass Transit across the state and developing master plans to ensure their uh, trans, uh, transition to electrification. So, in all, again, an incredibly strong year for the commercial operations group um, and a very uh, broad portfolio of activities. And I, I want to thank the team who are committed to our customers uh, for all the work that they did. Yeah, thanks, Sarah, and would certainly echo uh, all of that. Uh, as you said, the headwinds uh, impacting uh, the collective efforts uh, that you and the team are continuing to undertake were certainly strong. But uh, as you referenced multiple times, we've, start, we've taken nothing and clearly have tremendous momentum in uh, a number of key initiatives. And uh, I'm all the more confident about our ability to execute uh, going forward. So very, very well done uh, to you and the team. Um, other thoughts, comments, questions for Sarah? All right. Uh, last on the financial side, Adam, uh, you've been managing our expectations uh, over uh, the course of uh, the last several months, and it appears you effectively landed the plane in the zone um, that uh, you've been targeting. Uh, recap it for us, please. Sure, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, good morning. Um, yeah, as we've been saying and narrowing the ranges since we've been reporting back, um, as of now, these are unaudited numbers, so they are subject to some change between now and the uh, the March meeting where KPMG will, will present the audited uh, certified numbers. But uh, as of now, we are closing at a net loss of 16.7 million for the for the full year. Uh, obviously, that's driven by the loss of revenues, as Sarah was mentioning, from uh, the impacts of COVID and the warmer weather, uh, impacts on transmission, which is uh, mostly as a result of the RTEP a case that you're aware of that uh, reversed an earlier ruling where we had a $32 million impact this year from, from that, which was somewhat offset by an increase in our overall transmission rates for the, for the rate year, July 1, 20 through June 30th, 2021. Non-utility revenues are, are off by uh, $13 million. Again, as Sarah was mentioning, um, because of the delay and the pause of doing projects in the energy efficiency space, uh, that resulted in lower fees. So it's a function of how much actually gets uh, built and delivered to the customers that drives the fees. So those are the three major drivers of the of the drop in revenues. 
drop in revenues offset by an overall decrease of expenses um, based on our response to the pause. There were some other outliers in the expenses in terms of additional expenses for COVID claims. Uh, some of those will be recovered from FEMA. Some of those will not. Uh, we show here the, the portion that's not. And um, we had an increase in pension expense, which is driven by timing of the state's controllers fiscal year March 31st at the stock market low. Hope to get some of that back this year if the markets stay where they are through uh, March 31st of this year. But that was a $40 million variance uh, to that expense. So um, overall, there, there was a, you know, those are the major contributing factors to the to the overall net loss. On the positive side, as you can see below, uh, in spite of all of that, we managed to meet our coverage ratios, whether it be the fixed charge coverage ratio, the debt service coverage ratio. That is uh, pretty much a function of the restructuring of the debt. We did it early in the year with our bond issue that aligned assets and liabilities and uh, helped with liquidity so that uh, the result was that we were able to make our, our coverage ratios. Um, and that's basically the major takeaways. Uh, open up for, for any other questions. Also, just to mention a balance sheet remains strong. Liquidity is very, very high, over a billion, uh, about a billion point four, and uh, additional um, lines, bank lines of credit available to us as well. 300 days of uh, cash on hand, so well above the targets for the, that the rating agencies are looking for. So the balance sheet uh, remains strong as well. Uh, thanks, Adam. Um, yeah, I'll pick up where you left off. Uh, I mean, 10, 11 months ago, when the severity of this storm you know, was beginning to be clear, uh, we wanted to focus uh, on our balance sheet, our liquidity. And this has already been mentioned, but kudos again uh, to you and the team for terrific execution on uh, going to market and uh, the financing and funding that uh, you were able to put in place there. Um, and I think uh, at the same time, if we all had a crystal ball and said uh, the extent of the dings uh, that we would have to take or what you've just recapped, uh, we'd have been very pleased. So as with uh, the rest of the team, kudos for steering and guiding uh, the ship through an incredibly uh, challenging time and storm. And uh, frankly, as I listen to you, other than those uh, uh, areas that are way out of our uh, control. Um, you really uh, kept us very much uh, on track and on plan. So uh, very, very well done uh, to you and the team. Um, other thoughts or questions for Adam? Okay. Um, with that, um, the next uh, portion of our meeting uh, shifts to uh, the committee reports uh, a week ago uh, finance and risk uh, met uh, and had a very, uh, as always, robust and uh, engaged discussion, appropriately so, uh, because we were recommending for full board consideration, I think upwards of uh, 400 million of uh, authorization or uh, approvals and what I think is uh, seven different uh, projects or recommendations. So. Uh, I'm pleased to uh, turn the floor over to uh, Tracy McKibben, our Finance and Risk Committee Chair, for her report. Thank you, Mr. Chair, although you've sort of captured my report there. Um, as you said, we met on January 19th, the Finance Committee, we adopted minutes, we received one staff report, and we considered seven items, as you suggested, um, and those items reaching approximately $400 million. Um, the items before the trustees adoptions are first, the integration of the canals liabilities into the current NIPA other post-employment benefits or OPEP trust. Um, we also for the capital program, as we continue to deliver on our ambitious agenda for the year, um, we have several authorization requests, uh, a capital expenditure for the Macy New Scotland transmission upgrade in the amount of dollars a capital expenditure authorization request for the Smart Generation and Transmission Initiative Communications Backbone Program in the amount of $24,752,178. A capital expenditure for the Transmission Life Extension Modernization Program, Niagara Switch Yard Project, <coughs> in the amount of $121 million. 
a capital expenditure for the transmission life extension modernization program for the Niagara Protective Relay replacement project in the amount of 18 million 300,000, a capital expenditure for the Blenheim Gilboa power project unit circuit breaker replacement in the amount of 10 million 544,000. In addition, a contract award in the amount of $1,458,135 to ABB Enterprises Software Inc. to disconnect existing and install new ISO phase bus work. A capital expenditure for the St. Lawrence FDR Power Project Loan Salt Dam Positive Restraint Barrier Project. That's a lot. In the amount of $11,831,700. In addition, a specific contract award in the amount of $8,100,000. Uh, for the HOHL Industrial Inc. to install the positive restraint barrier. Those are uh, the items the committee um, reviewed and are now submitting them uh, for a motion to adopt um, to the full board of trustees. And I'll take uh, Tracy's report um, as a motion uh, to so adopt. So if I could have a second before we have any discussion. Second. Second, thanks, Michael. <clears throat> My only comment would be to reaffirm uh, what was discussed last week. I mean, the Marcy and Niagara Switchyard projects are multi-year projects. So while between the two of them, there's north of, uh, uh, I think, 320 million bucks uh, or whatever there, we'll see those uh, uh, expenditures again um, as the specific uh, projects and contracts are let over the next uh, two, three, I think, uh, up to five years, but uh, further evidence of the very meaningful investment uh, that uh, Joe's reference that we're continuing to make. So unless there's any other questions, um, I'd ask for uh, all in favor of uh, those seven motions uh, to say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Terrific. Thanks very much, uh, Tracy. Uh, appreciate that. Okay, and then this morning, uh, we had uh, Cyber Committee, uh, obviously a hot topic uh, and very relevant and significant and critical, not only to us, uh, but uh, uh, for uh, many others uh, as well that have been impacted by uh, the ongoing threats in the cyberspace and great discussion and uh, dialogue there. Uh, Mike uh, Balboni, our Cyber Committee Chair, uh, we'll bring forward his report, please. Yes, Mr. Chairman, the uh, Cyber and Physical Security Committee met this morning prior to this board meeting where the, the committee adopted the minutes from our July 2020 meeting. In addition, the Security Committee heard about NIPA's security posture and the response to the widely reported attack using a compromised version of the SolarWinds Orion product. NIPA has not been using the vulnerable version of this SolarWinds product and an in-depth investigation has not identified any evidence to suggest that NIPA was impacted by this attack. The NIPA security team continues to monitor the situation in close collaboration with the industry, state, and federal partners. Uh, this morning's meeting was also an opportunity to hear from Eric Myers, the new Chief Information Security Officer for NIPA, and uh, understand his vision as it relates to the security of our enterprise. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, no vote is uh, required there. Uh, so, uh, uh, Michael, I appreciate uh, your leadership and uh, what's a critically important uh, arena for us, uh, evidenced, uh, as I said, and as you've just referenced by uh, the significant activity uh, that uh, we're all dealing with. All right, um, our consent agenda. Um, we've all had a chance to uh, review uh, the materials that were presented uh, to us, uh, for the most part, it's uh, you know routine uh, materials that uh, we see on a regular basis. Uh, and unless anyone has uh, any questions, I'll ask for a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. So, there was definitely a second in there. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. I will uh, selfishly uh, indulge for a minute here. I think and hope Keith Hayes is on. Uh, I was very pleased, Keith, to see uh, the nature of uh, the uh, 
power allocation projects impacting uh, Western New York. Um, can you give us a couple minutes of color there? I mean, the, the investments uh, were significant. The job opportunities were substantial. Can you give us a quick uh, drive-by there? Is Keith there or was I presumptuous? Yeah, Keith's not on here. So your question again, Chair? Well, I was just uh, frankly making sure we took due credit for what were some significant uh, investments and <clears throat> yeah. uh, job uh, you know prospects for um, my my end of the state and and the region up here? But that's fine, uh, Sarah. Yeah, no, no, no. It's true. I mean, as I highlighted in my in my commercial operations uh, report, you know, we continue to receive applications and allocate power out. I think that the EdCap 2.0, which is the temporary you know, power assistance program is enabling customers, um, again, in your neck of the woods um, to come back uh, from the pandemic, uh, to have that level of, of certainty around the, 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 the rates um, that they're going to be paying for power and, and fundamentally support of the jobs, um, the retention of the jobs uh, there as well. So as you saw in the numbers that I reported, we have a robust, uh, allocation of the of the volumes of hydro uh, and we are consistently thinking of ways to ensure that the, the citizens are able to benefit from that and we continue to have 20 billion plus of capital commitments tied to that as well as over 400,000 jobs so as you said kudos to the economic development key account managers and all of the people at night in the back office um, that support those programs including the uh, investments in, in ensuring that we have the availability of our hydro assets going forward. Yeah, and it's great to see that, frankly, the private sector investments uh, that are being made. Uh, they're significant and substantial. Obviously, we're an enabler in all of that, but I'm not I'm trying to take undue credit. I give the bulk of the credit to the private sector for uh, the investments they're making and the job growth uh, they're bringing uh, to New York State in general and our market in particular. So kudos to all. All right, with that, um, unless there's any other matters to come before us that completes uh, our agenda uh, for today. So uh, one last time, <clears throat> uh, outstanding outcomes and results in 2020 in uh, the face of significant uh, challenges and headwinds. <clears throat> Gil and the team, job well done. Uh, this has been alluded to, you know, a good deed goes on unpunished so it sets the the bar and the table uh, all the higher uh, for 21 and beyond so we know we're incredibly well positioned to leverage our strengths and uh, focus on uh, all the more disciplined and intentional execution in the months and years ahead so very well done uh, everyone with that i'll ask for a motion to uh, adjourn our meeting i'll move have a second second all in favor Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Thanks so much, everyone. Uh, we look forward to seeing you in a couple months. Uh, I think the next next official date is uh, March 30th. So if not before, uh, stay safe, stay well, and uh, be healthy. Thanks so much Thanks for being so with us.